let me summarize what we have discussed yesterday. We have discussed the meaning of research. Research means addition of some knowledge, addition of some information. It is to extract some information out of the data available and add to the pool of the knowledge that we have. Research can be at any, any level. It can be in schools, it can be in uh, college, it can be in uh, university, it can be doctor level research, it can be graduate level research. The first important step in research is problem identification. And we have focused on only the first problem so far. The subsequent next steps we have discussed, but we will, we will discuss them in the next classes. The next steps thereafter are like uh, listing down the research objectives, identifying research methodological issues, undertaking data analysis, data collection, data analysis, and preparation of your research model and conclusion. But the first step is problem identification. And uh, that is the starting point. In our previous class, we have discussed that the problem, if you're doing it uh, a doctoral research, the problem should be of uh, national level or a global level, which is uh, confronting the humanity. And uh, at the same time, it should be something which is possible within your given resource and time constraints. We cannot do very difficult tasks. So we have to keep in mind our own limitations, our own constraints, our own resources. And accordingly, we, can, we have to take up a problem. We have discussed yesterday that uh, there are plenty of problems surrounding us. And these problems give us an opportunity to undertake research. Today, I will uh, briefly discuss about uh, research philosophy. What are the basic research philosophies that we have? <coughs> Broadly speaking, we have two types of philosophies. One is, which is focusing on quantitative data and which is called positivist. So positivism or positivist, positivism is a, a noun and positivist is an adjective. So if I say I'm a positivist or uh, I can say that I believe in positivism, both these sentences are correct. So positivism believes that uh, if you are undertaking any research, it should be based on accurate data, which can be verified, which can be tested, which is absolutely same across the nation, across boundaries, and can be found in same level by everybody. If I say this is white, this is white, it means everybody should be able to say this is white. That is what we call as positivism. It focuses on verifiability, accuracy, and uh, something which can have very high level of scientific rigor. Positivism is a very popular branch of research and has been in, uh, um, I mean, use for almost, uh, I mean, 200 years. This is very popular in introducing scientific movement and therefore it is also called traditionalist. So you might be having a question in your mind, if it is traditionalist, what is modern? There is nothing like a word modern, but uh, the, we will uh, definitely uh, talk about uh, the other philosophy also. But let's now discuss about positivist philosophy. Our friend Ajit Kumar is doing research in agriculture. And if he undertakes an experimental study, for example, he undertakes an experiment in a farmhouse, introduces certain, certain fertilizers, undertakes a study before adding fertilizer and after adding fertilizer, before and after, with controlled variables. So uh, they, he, ident he takes up, let's say, two farmhouse, two farms. In one, he puts fertilizer in another, no fertilizer. And undertakes measurements before 
putting fertilizer and after putting fertilizer. Then this is one example of experimental study. Ideally, experimental studies are considered to be outstanding research in the field of research method, uh, in the field of research. If you undertake a research using experimental methodology, then you are doing outstanding work. There is no doubt about it. Because experimental studies are purely based on positivist philosophy. And therefore, if some data has been studied and some interpretation have been made, probably same finding can be identified by another researcher who will also undertake similar experimentation. So then you might be asking a question, if this is what is research, then what can be any other philosophy of research? Because this is the philosophy of research, you all know, I know. So there is another philosophy which you call as phenomenology. This is another extreme. Phenomenology or phenomenological study focuses on capturing the data from the heart and understanding it and sharing your subjective understanding with the world. So these are two extreme views. One is positivism and one is phenomenological study. Both are popular methods of research. Both are able to contribute to the knowledge building, but the difference is use. If you are undertaking experimental research, if you are undertaking a research where you are undertaking quantitative research, use data is there. You are collecting data, analyzing it, using random sampling methods. All these things will fall into which category? Any one of you? Yes, anyone who can guess? If you are undertaking large database to study using random samples, collecting huge database and analyzing them and giving the findings which are purely objective findings, which can be arrived at by anybody, whether you are doing research or somebody else is doing, doesn't matter because the data are hard facts. So anyone who can guess what type of study it will be? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, this is Ramesh here. Good morning. Yes. Welcome, Ramesh. Yeah, it's called as quantitative research, sir. Yes, wonderful. Thank uh, you, Ramesh. Uh, it is quantitative and, research. Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely right. And it is part of which branch of study? Positivism. Remember it. Which branch of study? Positivism. So positivism is focusing on quantitative study. Now, let me take, give you another example. I undertake a study on beggars. I go to beggars and uh, ask them about their life, their biography, their experiences. And based on, uh, I mean, those biographies that I am able to listen from the beggars, I share their biographies with the world and uh, try to draw the uh, inferences and identify the reasons why there are so many beggars in India. What kind of study it will be? Uh, it can be, so this is Nilata Desai. Welcome Sneha Sneha Lata. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, Absolutely research. right, wonderful clap for Sneha Lata Ji. I did not introduce this subject, you have introduced it wonderfully that it is a qualitative study. Then what kind of uh, branch philosophy is it? It is phenomenology. So they are, these are two fundamental types of research studies, what we call as positivism and what we call as phenomenology. Positivism focuses on undertaking large sample-based quantitative studies. And phenomenology focuses on undertaking intensive study on a very small group of people, qualitative study. The requirements are simple. If you are doing quantitative study, 
your sample size has to be very large. Data has to be very objective. Everybody can identify same result analyzing that data. Then it is called positivism or quantitative study. And the opposite of it, taking up a very small sample size, but undertaking very intensive work and undertaking and collecting qualitative data, which includes feelings, which includes your experiences, which includes your, uh, uh, I mean, observation of your own mindset, then we call it phenomenology. So these are two branches of researchers. Whichever branch you pick up, fine. <coughs> you can go ahead with that. Or uh, sometimes researchers use both the branches, quantitative as well as qualitative. That can also be possible. But I mean, don't do an injustice by cutting one branch and putting something of the other branch. For example, if you take a very small sample size, let's say a sample of only 10 people and undertake your research and apply statistical formula, statistical tools, and based on those statistical tool, you give your conclusion. This is my conclusion. Will it be research? No. Because you are neither part of uh, positivism nor you are part of uh, phenomenology. Because positivism requires very large sample size. You have not adopted that. The phenomenology requires very intensive and subjective data. You do not have subjective data. So you have uh, neither done justice with uh, positivism, nor you have done justice with phenomenology. Don't do this kind of justice, injustice. So you may, as per your own choice, as per your own expertise, as per your own passion, identify the basic research philosophy. By heart, I am a phenomenologist. And I love doing uh, qualitative studies. So my area of research was qualitative research. My passion for research was qualitative research. And I encouraged uh, my researchers, uh, my research scholars also to pursue qualitative research. But majority of the people today go for positivism, quantitative research. So it is fine. You can uh, go with positivism or you can go for with phenomenological studies. You have to keep in mind uh, the end result first before you start your research. End result means if you are adopting a, a positivism philosophy, then probably at the end of the research, you will be able to undertake a quantitative research analysis and uh, draw conclusions which will be statistically verifiable across the globe by everybody. On the other hand, if you are uh, like me, uh, undertaking phenomenological based studies, then at the end of the research, you will be able to prepare some case studies. At the end of the research, you'll be able to share some subjective experiences. At the end of the research, you will notice some transformation taking place in your own understanding, in your own feelings, in your own uh, um, experiences, which you will share with the world. These are subjective experiences, need not be replicable across the globe, need not be the same to be observed by different people. And therefore, this will be a different approach, which is called phenomenology. So research philosophy is the starting point, And that will help you in deciding your research problem. 
what is your research problem how do you want to address it what are you going to be your research steps what will be ultimate outcome from your research so keeping the end result in mind you have to prepare the next steps the end result means at the end of the research who is going to benefit from your research at the end of the research how is the world going to benefit from your research i always believe that if the research that you undertake does not give benefit neither to you nor to the world then don't do any wastage of time and resources the research that you undertake requires huge time and huge resources you are investing so much of things therefore don't do a research just for doing research do something which is meaningful which can contribute either to the benefit of the world or which can benefit to your own level of understanding your own knowledge this is the first essential point <laughs> so let's again <coughs> it <coughs> sorry <coughs> let's again come back <clears throat> if you are a phenomenologist then you are going to be the first beneficiary of your research because it's a subjective experience and therefore you are going to experience the resultant transformation so if you are undertaking a qualitative research you will experience some transformation in yourself some addition of knowledge some change in your skills some change in your attitude some change in your um, behavior so you will be the first beneficiary of your own research on the other hand if you are the positivist you will probably come up with a verifiable model which will add to the theory of the existing studies that means It, the addition of a new theory to the pool of knowledge that we have is your contribution so after doing your doctoral study you will be able to add a new theory after doing your doctoral study you will be able to add a new piece of knowledge in the case of positivism so if you are undertaking if you are a positivist you are going to contribute to theory building and if you are a phenomenologist you are going to share with the world a new experiences i hope these are clear accordingly pick up your research problem that you want to pick up plenty of problems are there but which which problem you want to address if you are finding it difficult to find the real problems read the newspapers you'll find plenty of problems and you can pick up one of them every day there are so many i mean news happenings and all those things another thing that you can do is read literature if you are from let's say organization behavior area ob area organization behavior area you go through the journals in the field of organization behavior read uh, some 30 40 or 50 articles research papers discussions interviews related to organization behavior then probably you will be able to strike a new subject or a new topic something which should be studied and that is your starting point the problem has been identified but this problem needs to be narrowed down this problem needs to be clarified research objectives have to be clearly pointed out that will require time and that is that will take you to the next most important step that is called literature review but before that this is the starting research problem identification i hope whatever i have discussed are clear 
Any questions you have, you're most welcome. Tomorrow is Sunday. We'll not be able to discuss 